Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, I'm just doing a short mod to this. Uh, I mentioned I was going to look at this in a previous video. Um, but this is my. I just moved this out of the way. Marble Madness. So this is the NTSC version, and you've seen I get weird graphical issues with this. So you can see actually there is uh, USA. That's just reminding me actually. When I have the problems with that tennis, I just need to check that layer just to see if it does say USA on it because uh, I'd be interested to know. Um, maybe there's a problem with the lockout chip on that car. I don't know, but anyway. Um, so, in order to get in this, um, I just used, um, you know, a, a different bit. It's not the right bit for these, um, you can see these security bits here. But, you know, just forcing it in there and getting it between two of the things, you can actually get these things out. Um, it tears up the edge of the um, holes a little bit. You can smooth those down afterwards, but you won't be able to tell once I've done that. So, I'm comfortable with that for the moment. Uh, this cat was only a couple of quid anyway, and rather than try and sell it in the UK which is not that easy um, I'd rather just try and convert this um, I'm looking at the board here tiny 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 PCB amazing how small it is really for the size of the car um, I guess it's this whole bigger is better thing from the American market back then you know um, the carts didn't really didn't need to be that size they could have been quite small you know but uh, anyway um, yeah looking at this board here you're gonna have a few things you're gonna have some mapper stuff going on which um, yeah, in this case, is this this couple of this couple of seven four logic chips down here? Very basic stuff going on there. You've got the um, CIC chip up here. Um, that's interesting. But then the other thing you'll notice here, you know, I was looking at this as, as expecting, you know, a, a program ROM which you've got there, um, and then a character ROM. And actually, that looks like a RAM. I was like, this, that can't be a RAM. Why is that a RAM? And if you look at this here, you'll see on the board it says a uh, NES uh, AN ROM CHR RAM. So um, the graphics seem to be somehow put into this RAM. I've got no, I'm not really sure how that works, um, or whether that's actually just additional RAM that can be mapped through the mapper there for the you know the system to make use of that for graphics. So you know it, it streams things from here into there via code, you know, and use of the mapper, and then that's how that works. Um, well, yeah, which would make sense, and that's probably exactly what's going on there. Um, so you've got, I think, uh, looking at the ROM image of this, and it took me a while messing around trying to find the right utility to do it with. Um, I found something called, F I think it's Fami Tool or something, or Fami ROM or something. Like that. I'll post a link to it in the description um, down below. Um, it's a Windows app that I use just to extract the contents of this, and straight away it said, you know, there was no character ROM. Uh, it's just a program ROM, and uh, it's a 1024, uh, sorry, 128K. Um, 128 KB. So, um, looking at the pinouts for this, I found a chip that's identical, which is a 27C 256. Now, this is a 256K chip, but um, I think the relevant pin is pulled low on here. I need to check it. That might be one of the things I'll do finally. Um, so, all I've done is just burned the PAL version of this ROM onto here, which does contain the code and the graphics, as far as I can tell, um, all within the prog, you know, the prog part of the thing. So, I just need to just solder this chip solder this one on there and uh, give it a try I think um, so I'll get that chip off there now right well that was incredibly easy it came off really easy I think in part because these boards are really thin so um, the heat um, transfer there is very good even on the uh, ground planes and stuff and the power power uh, plane there so um, just uh, yeah there's bits of solder and stuff on there I need to clean up and flux and stuff but I'll get the chip on there now um, and then clean it up and uh, we'll give it a try well again that was incredibly um, easy it really was you can see it's, uh, it's looking quite good uh, nice and tidy I've uh, covered the uh, window there so uh, yeah, I'll give this a try see what happens right well I've had a bit of a moment of uh, being a bull in a china shop there uh, really I guess in summary you can see I've removed it again um, and the reason being it doesn't work and the reason it doesn't work is blatantly obvious really um, when I think about this this is 27C256 this is like 32k now when I look at the original binary um, size it's 128k now there's a couple of things with this that are a bit weird um, the pin, the, I've looked at the pinouts for the 256 and I think one pin's not used or it's um, well it is used but Moving on to the two five six, uh, sorry, the five one two, the two seven C five one two, the next chip up, the sixty four K. I can see um, a f um, one of the upper address lines um, is combined, 
by the looks of things with the programming pin. The programming pin's moved and you've got the upper address pin. I think it's pin 1 is um, the upper address pin. So it looks like this board will not accommodate more than a 64k chip which is really curious. Um, you know, if you look at the original mask ROM here, um, I've had a look at the cart, the bank DB for this, and it does say it's 128k. Um, but for the life of me, I can't see. I mean, there's no pinouts for, you know, the, 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 the chips for this, unless, you, you know, um, someone else has got one somewhere. I've searched high and low, and I can't find how you could get 128k out of the available pins there. Um, unless there's some sort of count counting type logic, you know, because there's a this is counter based the map is it one six one or something on there? I forget. Um, can't see the damn thing. Yeah, seven four ACT one six one. So um, I don't know. Uh, I'm a bit mystified. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to order two seven C. 512 um, and we'll just try it in that. I'm also going to go away and look at the ROM image on my PC in a minute, chop it into two 64k chunks and just do a binary compare because I suspect that maybe, there's a, maybe these have been dumped incorrectly and people are just thinking this is 128k when actually it's 64k and all they've done is they've mirrored you know the same thing twice um, so uh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll and I'll, I'll report back. But I mean, obviously, the, you know, the, the, in a minute, you know, by the magic of editing, um, I'll have a two seven C five one two, and we'll give that a try. Right. Well, I've had a change of plans. Um, there's no way two seven C five one two is going to work. It is one hundred twenty eight k. I did manage after a lot of messing around searching to find this. If I just zoom in, um, I'll have a look. You can see there. Program 128k 28 pin, so it does exist. You can get the the relevant number of uh, address lines out of that uh, package. Um, <coughs> so, what I'm looking at doing, um, let's zoom out a little bit, is I've got some 27C010s which are 128k. Um, these are 32 pins, so there's going to be some pins overlaid. And if I show you on the board itself. Um, I've just done a sort of um, visual inspection of this, and it's, it's certainly going to be possible. I can overlay it there. It, this edge here is very close to the inside of the cart slot there. I might need to shave a bit of the plastic off, I'm not sure yet. It'll probably just fit very snugly, I think. But I will have to relocate that cap. So I'm going to do with that cap to take the cap off and put it on the other side of the board there. Um, and then that should be fine. Um, I'll have to bend out the four legs on, on the, that, the, this, that side there. Um, and it'll be a bit more apparent if we look at the diagram here. If we just compare these, um, if we look at the original uh, versus the um, what I'm planning to stick on there, the 010, you'll see pin 1 is A15, well pin 1 on here is your VPP, but it's going it's to be overlaid, those two pins there are going to just be hanging over the board, so pin 3 will be connected to uh, A15. Um, as normal, and as you go down and check uh, the uh, pinouts here, they're exactly the same all the way to the uh, bottom there. Um, so there's no problems there. That's fine. So that side is fine with respect to um, the original pinouts. We just we just got to note that we've got A16 is your you know the the, the, the highest the upper dress line there, uh, which will be hanging over. So we'll have a wire coming off there to somewhere else, and the VPP to somewhere else. So then when we compare to the other side, um, you'll see top pin there is VPP, um, you know, your plus five, um, whereas we're going to be, you know, the first two are going to be overlaid over the board, so our first pin is pin 30, which is no connection, so that's where we're going to reroute our plus five, um, let me think about this, yeah, plus five from, he, uh, from this no, no, no connection across to pin one VPP, so that'll give us our power. Um, just looking at this, so then the next one down is A14, and if we look here, it's A14, and then they continue to be in parallel, um, you know, the right values all the way down here, down to uh, DQ3, uh, which is D3, it's your data pin. So there's no issues there, um, except for the additional dress line. So when you look at here, A16 is in between um, 10 and 11. So if you look at 10 and 11, we've got 10, output enable 11. So this is where 16 needs to go. 
on the uh, 27C um, 010. Um, I'm just wondering what needs to go to this pin, the output enable. Uh, da, 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 da. I think we just make that high. Um, or we join it to chip enable. Yeah, I think we'll join it to that. So I'll join the OE to that, and then the pin where this goes into the board, we will wire to pin 16. That should do the job, I think. So I'll have a go at that now. There we go. So you can see it's just uh, spreading its wings there with these uh, legs. Uh, I've relocated that cap on the other side, so that's okay. Um, I haven't soldered it on yet. I'm going to do that in a minute. But before I do that, I want to check, you know, check against the diagram. Just make sure I'm not missing any of the pins there that I need to lift. It might cause me a problem, but I'm just going to um, just try this in here um, as it is, just held in place like that, just to see what I might need to do um, with regards to that. Yeah, so you can see, um, you can see that it's going to be very, very tight, if not uh, impossible to fit that in there. I'm going to have to shave off that the piece of plastic. Um, there I think. Um, perhaps bend these legs a little bit, I'm not sure. I think it should be alright, as long as I leave that piece in, in, in place there, the edge piece, it should fit okay. Right, so as you can see, um, got the chip on there, it needs to clean it up, um, that's why I will do that in a minute, so that it looks nice and tidy. But um, yeah, minimal wires, um, I could probably trim, trim a few of these legs off, I could probably trim that one off there, sorry it's not focusing very well there. Trim that top one off, trim that second one off, because they're not used for the programming and stuff. I'm going to leave them on there anyway, just in case I do need to reprogram this at any point um, in the future. But you can see I did what I suggested, I just joined the output enable to the chip select, um, or what I think is the chip select, um, and the power is obviously rerouted as well, the plus five. Um, I think that's pretty much it, and that upper address line, which comes, I think it's from the top second pin there, I think it's a, is it A16, comes all the way down to uh, the pin where the output enables lifted. Um, <coughs> so, and as you can see, the final thing I've done is just modified this a bit here, so yeah, it's, this is not an elegant uh, mod really, but um, it will do the job, I just need to just smooth it down a bit, because you can see it's not quite straight in there, there's still a bit of pressure there, so I'll just um, <coughs> use my files and things just to make that perfect. Um, but we'll just give that a try, you know, so uh, if I just set the camera up, we'll just put this in, show you, it's not screwed together, so I've got to be careful with this, push it down, switch it on, as you can see, that's working, so, a moment of truth, let's see if that graphical weirdness has gone away, uh, so if I just hit start, across here, uh, and... 90. Yeah, that's looking sweet. So there you go, I've converted that to PAL. Um, it's not taking too long really, it was annoying that um, I was stupid at the beginning there, I didn't look at the size of the ROM and just went hurtling off with a 27C uh, 256. Um, <clears throat> you know, and that would work if you've got a, 200, if you've got a 32K um, PROG, um, but clearly in this case I had 128K. Um, Excellent, yeah, I'm pleased with that. Brilliant, so I'll clean it all up, uh, reassemble it, and uh, I'm done. So I thought we'd have a quick test of this, I'll just see how far I can get. Uh, just make sure it's working, you'll be able to see um, as the levels trans you know, you transition between the levels and uh, some of the scrolling and stuff occurs, that hopefully it should look okay. I didn't realise you can hold down or press, I think, in the, L, the, the B button, sorry, it's the B button, the A button, to move quicker, um, which is quite cool. I think we can get to about round four or five on this, and then it gets insanely hard, because you get these like plunges that you've got to go over at the exact right time to make you jump over a gap. It's I'm not sure how the hell you do that, but. It's quite easy to avoid that black marble, it's much harder in the arcade, I've got them God, they can jump a long way. Shit. Oh, 
Oh. Okay then. Crack then. Oh, and again. Oh shit. It uh, plays really well this one, isn't it? I'm really impressed on the sound as well, music. Very faithful to the arcade. Yeah, you see that scroll down there, I think that should that had some sort of graphical artifacting or something going on before. Looking good so far, I think. You get the little bits of flickering, but I think that's probably normal for this game anyway. It's quite hard this bit because you bounce off those edges, it's like they're made of rubber or something. Oh shit. Acid can be hard to get around. It depends where it's placed, you know, it's like where it is now, it's like, oh god. Right in where I want to go. Oh. Oh, it's lucky. Yeah, you see that bit uh, was corrupted before as well when you went down there. Oh, that's me trying to go too fast. This bit can be hard. I'm trying to go that damn slope there. Oh, maybe. No, that's just the next round I get stuck on. Uh, I think. Yeah, I think it's this one. We'll see why. First part's relatively easy. These vacuums can be annoying. If you speed past them, it's not so bad. Oh, damn. It's my miscoordination there. It's trying to go that way. Oh, that works. Oh. Now you see, now this is where it gets incredibly, insanely difficult. Oh, just because you've got to get past these and they knock you, um, say like that. Oh. oh, come on, stop bouncing around. Now this is the bit, this is just insane. Ah, oh, for God's sake. Maybe you could just speed past this bit, I don't know. I wish it'd stop putting me on the bloody edge. It's just incredibly difficult because they, they come back too quickly. What I needed to do is go around the other side somehow. Anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.